More. I'm joined now by security analyst Domatilla Sagramoso from King's College London. Domatilla, there's been much speculation about who's responsible for the explosions over the Kremlin. Who would have an interest in attacking Moscow in this way? Well, I mean, there are two versions or two possibilities. One is that uh, this is what we call a false flag operation, that the Kremlin, uh, you know, the Russian uh, government decided to sort of uh, create this kind of attack on itself to mobilize the population, uh, you know, to give itself uh, an argument in favor of uh, hitting at uh, administrative buildings in, in Kiev and maybe sort of decapitating the leadership. Uh, <clears throat> and this is important because, in a way, we are on the face of a counteroffensive, so hitting at what we call control and communication, sort of the nerve system, is a, is a very sort of uh, effective target in many ways. So uh, this line of argument seemed uh, seemed quite reasonable to a certain extent. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there's also evidence that Ukrainians uh, were thinking about hitting uh, inside Russia to sort of destabilize the regime, uh, to uh, sort of bring the war closer to home to Russians, uh, you know, to make it more tangible to Russians uh, and also in, in other occupied territories. Uh, despite sort of uh, the risks involved. Uh, so in the face of a sort of uh, anticipated counteroffensive, it is possible that uh, some Ukrainians may have thought, uh, you know, at the level of, of military strategy that this would sort of destabilize, uh, you know, the Russians and, and create panic and, and sort of, uh, you know, uh, create a disruption. Right. So I think it is difficult at this stage to know uh, which is the most convincing line of argument. Now, Russia clearly blames Ukraine for the incident and says it reserves the right to retaliate. What do you make of that? Should Kiev be worried? Yes, I will well not deny there was a massive attack of, of, on Kiev by, uh, you know, by Russians using uh, quite, uh, you know, effective missiles to a certain extent, the, the Shahids, but it didn't really uh, produce any positive results because the air defense systems were uh, quite effective at, at uh, sort of countering these attacks. But I think it was clear that this was a, an, an attempt at retaliation. Uh, there were rumors that Russia might be relying on, on tactical nuclear weapons, but these were never confirmed. I think that, uh, you know, this is always a possibility and, uh, you know, we shouldn't exclude it. I think at the moment, uh, you know, I, I, would, uh, I would be quite cautious. I don't think that Russia is going to go uh, along down along that line. Uh, you know, but it is always, of course, a possibility and we need to remain cautious. But there is no evidence at the moment that Russia is moving in that direction. And that would, uh, you know, if, if Russia was moving in that direction, we would see uh, a significant movement also of sort of American and, and NATO forces to see how to react to that. And we haven't seen that. So, uh, you know, for the moment, I remain uh, sort of uh, optimistically cautious, but of course, worried as well. Domatilla, thank you very much for talking with us. That was Domatilla Sagramasso from King's College, London. Well, for more, I'm joined now by Stephen Blank. He's Senior Fellow for Russia at the American Foreign Policy Council. Mr. Blank, it's good to have you with us on the program tonight. How likely do you think it is that Ukraine is behind this apparent attack on the Kremlin? I find it quite inconceivable that Ukraine would do this. As Zelensky said, they don't have enough weapons and they wouldn't waste it on a target because most of us know that Putin spends very little time at the Kremlin and certainly not in the middle of the night. So uh, I don't think that it's uh, at all true. Uh, I would not put it past the Russians to launch what has been called a false flag operation. Uh, what what escapes me, though, is what, what pretext they need because they are destroying Ukraine even as we speak, I think this is an attempt to uh, generate public support at home, maybe abroad. But uh, I don't know what they could threaten to do to Ukraine that they haven't done already, except maybe nuclear weapons. And I don't think that's particularly likely. So uh, I don't see where Ukraine gains anything by doing this. And let's just say that the Russian people buy the line coming from the Kremlin that this was an attack. I mean, what does that tell us then about the defensive shield around the Kremlin and around President Putin? Well, it doesn't tell us anything. 
it, all you saw on the TV was a flash, uh, which could have been caused by a Russian drone, uh, with, which they then shot down. Uh, it doesn't tell you anything. Mm -hmm. So you can't make a judgment from that. And Moscow's track record uh, validates what uh, Joseph Conrad called Russian officials sublime contempt for the truth. Mm -hmm. So uh, the uh, there's no way to prove that Ukraine did this. It makes no sense. Uh, the Kremlin is not a worthwhile military target for the reasons I already said. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't strike me as plausible that Ukraine would attack it. U.S. Um, reactions, they've been somewhat circumspect. Um, Anthony Blinken says it's up to Ukraine to decide how it defends itself. But if this had been a Ukrainian attempt to assassinate President Putin, certainly the White House and the Pentagon, they, they would have been informed, wouldn't they? I assume they would have been, but I've talked to U.S. government officials earlier today. They have no knowledge of what actually took place, and they're not buying the Russian story as a result. There is no evidence out there that can prove that Ukraine was behind this. And given the Russians' track record, uh, I, I wouldn't run off and believe this claim either. Moreover, I mean, they're, they're not in any position to complain about attacks on Putin. They tried to kill Zelensky at the beginning of the war. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, that's their modus operandi, not Ukraine's. Let me ask you about what we're hearing from Ukraine. Why do you think President Zelensky and his government are so careful about taking ownership of any attacks on Russian territory or even in Crimea? Well, I think it would be a public relations disaster if they attacked Moscow. Uh, they have sent uh, cruise missile strikes uh, at Russian military targets in Crimea uh, and oil refineries of, uh, uh, or gas refineries, oil refineries in Belgorod, which is not far from the border. But they, in general, are very careful when they, they strike at a Russian target. And I don't think that they would do something this uh, escalatory at this point in time. It just doesn't make sense. There have already been calls in Moscow um, from the former president, Dmitry Medvedev, and from the Speaker of the Duma for um, direct retaliation against Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Uh, what do you make of these calls? Well, Medvedev and... Uh, the Speaker of the Parliament are what the Chinese used to call the running dogs of Putin. I mean, Medvedev's specialty is making outlandish, brutal threats against Ukraine, to, which are actually not particularly credible, just to prove that he's a real tough guy and in the running to support Putin and maybe become his successor. Uh, I, I don't put any great store by that. Stephen Blank with the American Foreign Policy Council. Mr. Blank, we appreciate your time and your valuable analysis tonight. Thank you. You're welcome.